This is actually some training where we're going to be talking about the three best marketing funnels to sell. What I'm going to break down here is pretty much how I ran my agency. I'm basically just going to give you the three products that I used to sell. I think a lot of people believe that marketing funnels are huge, long, massively complicated, complex things that involve email and Facebook and squeeze pages and remarketing and automation. While that's true to an extent, they are big, long, complex pieces. They actually don't have to be these massive, long, complex projects. The number one question that I get asked when talking about how do I build a marketing funnel for a customer is people understand what a website is. As in you, the agency, understand what a website is. You understand how a website gets put together. In fact, in the flow section of these three different funnels, I am going to tell you how you can put them together. I don't really care what you use. I personally use Beaver Builder, Access Ally, and Active Campaign, as well as Opt In Monster. But we're actually going to talk about the higher level stuff and more importantly, how to sell them. The reason that my agency was able to build and sell marketing funnels a long time before even ClickFunnels existed or the concept of a funnel, like a marketing funnel or marketing automation funnel, was well known is is because we broke it down into different product types and we didn't call it a funnel. Rule one of selling marketing funnels is don't call them marketing funnels. But what I'm gonna break down for you today are the three best type of marketing funnels or the three best funnel projects that you can sell to customers. I've called them the list builder, the faster sales and the traffic magnet because those are the three products essentially that we're gonna be building. We're gonna look at what the type of funnel is who benefits from it the most, which is probably the most important piece, because this is going to tell you who to target and who benefits from it. Because although these funnels fit in with each other and, and when you get like into bigger and bigger projects, they all kind of merge together. There's no reason why you can't say, I'm just going to do list builder funnels. I'm just going to do faster sales funnels. There's no reason why you can't do that. Again, you don't have to call them funnels. In fact, I would argue that you shouldn't call them marketing funnels. We'll also be looking at the benefits of the funnel because that's ultimately what you're going to sell that's the sales pitch when you're talking to customers they don't want a traffic magnet they don't necessarily want faster sales they certainly don't want a marketing funnel what they want is the benefits that are specific to them what we'll also do is writing these out and finally i'm going to go over a brief overview of the flow which is the actual structure that you'll build all of these can be built anywhere from ten thousand to twenty five thousand dollars plus depending on what the type of customers that you're going after these funnels i have identified as three really profitable products that you could sell to your customers you could just sell one of them you can suggest that you do just sell one of them we start with the list builder the list builder is essentially a lead generation tool this basically allows your websites to generate leads on automation if you're building for customers and you can perhaps already see what the benefits are for this particular one this is going to be how they're going to generate leads you'll see in each one of these segments that Certain people are going to benefit from this more than others. A big problem that funnel builders face is they try to build like a sales funnel or a, a traffic funnel for a customer that isn't really going to benefit from it. This now will allow you to think, actually, I want to work with this type of customer and I want to deliver these kinds of benefits. This would be the solution I'd want to uh, work with. This is also about email list building. Your email list is still the most important asset that you can build. If I had to get rid of my website or get rid of my CRM database, I'd get rid of the website because I can replicate that anywhere and I can take the blog content and put it anywhere. My email list is essentially 10,000 people for me personally at the moment who have heard of me, who know me, who trust me, who've got a pretty good open rate. I would rather get rid of my website before I get rid of my CRM. If your customers know that they want to build an email list, this is the type of funnel you're going to want to build for them. The final thing that the list builder funnel does is it comes up with product ideas. I'm going to show you how, but when we've implemented this funnel here for some of our customers, insurance agents was one of them, they were told essentially by their customers, by their traffic, we want this type of product. We believe in this type of statement. We like this type of messaging. It's almost like testing out headlines on your audience in real time, even though it's a list builder, even though it's a lead generator, you can actually get incredible product ideas from this type of funnel. Now, who benefits from this? The number one type of customer that you can sell this to is someone who already has traffic. Now, you might be thinking, if they've already got traffic, then how can I help? Because traffic's the number one thing that people want. There are so many businesses that have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of visitors a year, a month, who aren't generating any leads. 
they essentially have that old school thing where they have tons of people come into their website and they hope that people are going to buy. If they do, great. And that's 0.1% conversion rate. If they don't, they just fall off. Actually, if you've already got traffic, I'm going to show you how to generate a list of leads and buyers as well as grow your email list and grow an email asset that will actually reduce your advertising cost. They have to have traffic already. They also really need to be creating content. Ideally, they've already got content on the site, and I don't mean like an about page. They're regularly producing a podcast. They're regularly producing uh, YouTube content. They're regularly producing even social content, which is kind of the other one. Maybe they already have a social presence, or they have a following, or they have an audience of some sort. Again, you would be staggered at the number of influencers on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all of these kinds of places who have fucking no idea how to make money from their 20,000, 100,000, 200,000 followers or subscribers on YouTube unless they go, I have to get sponsorship, I have to do advertising, and I have to create merchandise. You and I know, well, fuck, if you just put a landing page together and drove a bunch of your audience to that landing page and then sold to them, you're basically turning money over hand over fist. They don't know that. Don't take for granted your knowledge. If they've got a social following and they already have traffic, this is the perfect type of funnel for them to start with. Not to say that we can't move through, but right now, this is where they'll want to start with. The last thing is maybe they only have one type of product and they want to basically what we call diversify. They want to diversify their product range. Maybe they want to offer more products and services. This is actually a really good place. How frequently should they be producing content? It needs to be at a minimum weekly. If they have a, a YouTube channel that's like one video a month and they've got thousands or even millions of views, great. But as a rule, they want to produce it minimum. You want to have seen they're producing content for at least a year. It sounds like a long time. That's still tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. What that does is it shows you two things. One, they've got consistency and they're continuing their process. They're continuing to do it. Anyone can do content for six months and then drop it. We've seen it time and time again. They want to be doing content for at least uh, six months, at least a year, getting over that initial hump. If they're producing it weekly, it also shows you that they're committed. There are cases where people have only got like 12 YouTube videos. Mark Robber's an example of that, but he produces extremely high quality, long form videos. There's no reason why you couldn't go after that at all, but you wanna see some kind of consistency. It doesn't necessarily even matter about views. It's more about are they consistently creating content? The number one thing that I like about the list builder funnel is there's less time networking. Networking is, powerful, but it's expensive. It's time consuming. Right now, face-to-face -face networking pretty much out the window. Even if people say, yeah, but we've got back on Zoom, it still took a while for that to ramp up. If you build a list builder funnel for people, there's no reason why they would ever have to attend a single networking event again. I haven't. I don't bother with networking events at all. I think that they're outdated, to be honest, and I don't really like the idea of sharing breakfast with that many people. So there's less networking. It might be that you want to approach, let's say that there's a, a local telco provider. These exist, by the way. A local telco provider, they produce weekly blog content or helpful video content. Maybe they even have a podcast, but they know that the majority of their sales guys have to go out networking for those big deals. That doesn't necessarily have to happen anymore. That's taken from a real life example. We could say, how about we stop networking as much, start building a list builder funnel, a lead built generation funnel, and then we take it over from there. How does that sound? Most people are pretty uh, open to that. Another benefit, you get to prove what's popular. As marketers, we're constantly being told, what's the ROI? What's the return on investment? I'm like, I can actually tell you that this blog post generates 200 leads for you a week, a month, a year, whatever. This one doesn't. This blog post on you know, how to change a SIM card or how, dual SIM card phone should you get is super, super popular. This tells us that our audience are interested in this type of content. I'm gonna tell you how to generate those product ideas is interesting as well. It also shows you how um, close people are to the buying decision. If you work with a particular company, maybe they do camera reviews, for example, and they have a series of camera posts, like the best vlogging cameras for 2020, the best Nikon cameras, the best DSLR, the best mirrorless cameras, whatever. And you offer a lead generation tool, the same one across all those different blog posts. You can see that one of them 
increases the leads, like way more people sign up to it. That indicates that that type of blog post, people who are reading it are closer to buying. They're more wanting to make a decision. There's loads of analytics you can get just from beginning to build an email list out of it. Perhaps the biggest one, leads on automation. Who doesn't want to just grow their lead list on automation? Lower advertising costs. These two together, when you talk to your customers and you say, hey, what we're able to do for you is lower your ad costs and just generate leads for you 24 hours a day, that's very difficult to turn down. Don't fucking talk about marketing funnels. Don't talk about email marketing, list building, anything. Just focus on those two things. A lot of your uh, customers are pretty much sick of generating leads at cost and also lowering their ad cost. They, they want to lower their ad cost, their ad spend. You're able to do that with the list builder. There's a massive advantage to basically taking their content uh, and installing a series of opt-in posts. Let me go through the flow then. This is what you're going to build, right? Ultimately, remember, they've already got traffic and they've already got content. There's probably going to be two places where they have those. First of all, there's going to be some sort of social platform. For the sake of it, I'm going to say they're on YouTube. This could be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, doesn't really matter. There's some kind of social platform that they don't own. Then they've got their website and they create content. They're already driving traffic to those places. And what you're able to do is twofold. First of all, and this is quite a specific series of steps, the traffic they are currently getting to the website even if they have a lot of traffic coming to the site and they don't create content and they don't create YouTube content, that's fine. If they still have traffic coming to the site, which still happens, a lot of businesses you know, have a lot of traffic coming to their site, but they don't necessarily have blog content. What I want to do is I want to install a pop-up opt-in, specifically what we call a two-click pop-up. And I'm going to do an A-B test, which is essentially a split test. Now, if they have their site built on something like Beaver Builder, Elementor, you can build this in already. I use a tool called Optin Monster. The reason I like Optin Monster is because I can really quickly deploy an A-B test. I'll take a look at their traffic, I'll do a bit of a deep dive, and everyone from telco businesses to fitness to nutrition to marketing, coffee, everything, I'm able to say, I'm gonna put two opt-ins in front of them, I'm going to say, do you want to download our best ever niche coffees list, like the best ever coffee, micro coffees around the world, or do you want to know how to make the perfect espresso? I'm just going to put the pop-up in front of them, the opt-in. Ideally, if they've got a lead magnet or something, I put that behind it so they can have that. I want to basically measure which one do people click on the most. They go, oh, I actually really want the, I want to know about how to make the perfect espresso. Click, 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 click. And one of them will win out, right? Whatever one wins, let's say that this gets a 5% opt-in rate and this one gets a 3% opt-in rate. I'm going to take the messaging from the one that wins and I'm going to create a squeeze page for it with pretty much the exact same messaging. I'm going to say how to make the perfect espresso because I've proven that that's more popular. And this is why I like this system because you're taking the traffic that they've already got and you're asking them, what do you want to see more of? Do you want more sales strategies or do you want a list of niches? Do you want a marketing funnel proposal written out and ready to go or a blog post template? Do you want product launch templates or a YouTube script? Do you want to know the perfect espresso? Do you want to know why you shouldn't stir your espresso? The top five coffee companies in the UK, the top five ethical companies in the UK. I'm constantly testing this split test opt-in in front of them, which is why I like Optin Monster. I take whatever's popular, I create a landing page, and then in the descriptions or the links or the follow-on content for all of the social content, I'll say, make sure to head over to this squeeze page to get your links for your top five coffee recipes or how to make an espresso. There's a few questions here. I'm going to answer these. Number one, do messenger funnels using chatbots convert better than traditional funnels with email? The short answer is there's no way of knowing. It's like saying, is uh, rock music better than classical music? 
there are some really shit rock bands. There are some incredible rock bands. There's some really shit classical composers. There are some great classical composers. The tool is irrelevant. Don't fucking worry about the tool. The number one thing I have learned from seeing this all the way back when we had to hand build our CRMs is that it's the content that converts. I'm constantly being asked, we've got this new type of sales page. We've got a chatbot conversion, email conversion. Frank Kern popularized the content of the, 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 the concept of the autoresponder and responding to people for 100 days or whatever he has openly said that he was testing out it doesn't really work anymore the messenger bot works in the same way you could have an incredibly tight messenger bot that works and you could have a messenger bot that's shit my advice would be focus on the message that goes to that customer and test the sales message and make it as simple as possible i'm a big fan of landbot.io as a messenger tool it's kind of like halfway between a set a squeeze page and a, and a, um, a messenger bot but don't worry about the tools. One is not necessarily better than the other. It's impossible to say. Are you talking about exit pop-ups or those that flash in front of the audience from the get-go? Both. I have one opt-in, and if they've been on the page for longer than five seconds, shows up. And if they try to exit, it also shows up. It's the same one. It's the exact same pop-up, which is, again, why I like opt-in monster, because I'm able to say to it, I want you to show after five seconds, 10 seconds, I want you to show as soon as someone exits. Everyone says, I fucking hate those, but I will take a 6%, which is currently ours is converting at 6%. I'll take a 6% opt-in rate over anything. The reason I like this is because it takes the current traffic and tests, well, what do they want to see more about? You just brainstorm a bunch of ideas. You think, well, let's just test these. Some good indicators are what are the most popular pages, popular blog posts, what's the most popular video. Let's take that kind of message and create a lead magnet off the back of that. Throw that up. And they go, great, this one was 5%, this one was 0% or 0.1%. Well, that's still fine because we can still then take that one that was 5%. Clearly, people are interested in that. Let's use that one and then create the squeeze page off the back of that. And that's what I use. Even if you're putting it on like old content, if they've already got a YouTube channel, just put it in the links, just the description link. You're able to say, by the way, if you're creating all this social content, wouldn't it be great to generate some actual leads from this? Here's how we're going to test it. Here's how we're going to build it. And you grow their list over time. That is the first type there. We found insurance companies who are already generating a ton of traffic to their site. And we basically did this. We tested it in loads of places. The bottom, they already had blog content. We tested them at the bottom of blog posts, uh, and then we ended up testing it. But on the squeeze page, I want to A-B test the headline. The opt-in, I want to test the offer. Put two completely different offers in front of people because that will give me at least some indication as to what people are interested in. By the way, if you want to check out the marketing software that I use and get access to like a ton of campaigns and a ton of automations that are really good examples and that you could rewrite and steal and use, including my funnels, if you head over to sellyourservice.co.uk forward slash high level or you use the link down in the description below, you can actually get a 30 day free trial to the exact software that I use. Like I said, loaded with all of my like best performing campaigns and uh, segmentations and automations and things. So you can just kind of copy and paste them using them for your customers and for your own business. But anyway, back to the video. So faster sales. Although this is probably the one that most people think that businesses want, I think this is the hardest one for new businesses to wrap their head around. This is a sales funnel, heavily focused on sales exclusively. This is also about revenue and what we call LTV or specifically density is a word for customer transactions. How often does that single person buy? How often do people buy products? How often do people buy that product and what is their average sale value? If you can increase all four of those, ideally, you can double the size of your business by actually just increasing each one by 25%. That's really roughly the math. This helps sales. It helps with what we call transaction density. Of course, it's a revenue generator. Who benefits from this the most? People who benefit from this have already got products. They already have a product line. This is not necessarily for businesses that have just got one service or one product. The reason you can get product ideas from the list builder is because let's say that 5% of people are interested in how to make the perfect espresso. There's no reason why this business wouldn't be able to source a load of white label espresso machine stuff, package it up and sell it for 20 bucks or 100 bucks or 300 bucks or whatever it is. That's why it gives you product ideas. 
if they don't have a product line, it's going to be very difficult to build a faster sales process because if they're only relying on, you know, like a, a, a five thousand dollar product, there's nothing I can do necessarily with this particular model to help increase that. If, however, they say, actually, we'd be open to the idea of doing a one nine seven and a nineteen dollar product, like a book or some training or some software or free access or whatever, then that's very different. But they have to be open to it or better yet have a product line already they need to be generating leads ideally they're actually already doing something like this and again you might be thinking if they're generating leads what's the problem i guarantee you there are businesses out there who are generating leads every single day building a huge email list and not doing anything with them I, we know this to be the true who here has got an opt-in form that says sign up for our newsletter on your website and then you're not doing anything with them you've got a product line as well partly because i'm showing you three products here but you could do email marketing social media marketing whatever everything in between you've got a, a product suite a product menagerie but you're not doing anything with those leads that you generate i don't believe it's a marketer's job to get sales it's about getting leads then it's up to them completely disagree with you mallory that's 100 incorrect it is absolutely your job to, to generate sales 100 percent marketing's job is to make sales irrelevant by generating revenue for the business if you just want to focus on generating leads there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever if you want to just generate leads for customers great that's awesome if you want to just generate audience great that's 100 percent fine but a marketer's job is to help people know like and trust them to that point, they end up generating a sale. The sales process is very different. I completely agree with you on that. If you just want to generate leads for people, that's absolutely fine. But a marketer's job can absolutely categorically help people generate sales. I'll tell you, sure as shit, that if you show this to a salesperson, they start sweating. They go, fuck, what's the point in my role anymore? It sure as hell isn't going to be a salesperson generating this. A marketer in this funnel is going to have to come up with copy. They're going to have to come up with an offer. They're going to have to come up with messaging. They're going to have to make sure that the branding is consistent. They're going to have to make sure that the customer experience is all great and much, much more. That entire process is getting people to know and trust both the person as in the customer and the product. It's not enough to just say, we're just going to generate leads and leave it at that. If your business is just lead generation, great. But marketers should absolutely be generating sales. In fact, the number one bugbear I have is marketers thinking they're above sales. You could have 20 million leads, but as soon as the bank comes knocking and says, I need you to pay the mortgage, you go, oh, we've got 20 million leads. I don't care. Profit is the number one goal. All businesses' number one goal is to make revenue and profit. The number one goal of all entrepreneurs is to raise capital. That's it. If you believe that your best placement, like your skill set, and that's nothing wrong with your skill set, just being in lead generation, absolutely fine. But to say that marketing is either above or outside of sales is completely incorrect and uh, a massive perversion of, of everything that marketing has been working so hard to achieve. But if you've got content and stuff saying otherwise, I'd gladly check it out. So who? They need to be generating leads already. Essentially, it's the same thing. They want to be converting traffic. You might find that you've got people with an advertising campaign who are already generating leads. They might even have an advertising campaign that's making sales, but at some point you want to see them to be converting traffic. At some point you want to see them converting people who don't know that they exist into someone who's going, I trust you a little bit here and I want to learn more about it. If you've got this, these are the types of people that can generate from this type of product funnel or this type of funnel. Ideally as well, if they've got an audience, that helps as well, but that's not massively necessary. What are the benefits? The biggest one is free advertising. And I'm going to show you how. If you could tell your customers how much you spend a month or a day on advertising, they say, oh, we spend 10 grand a month on advertising, $1,000 a month on advertising, whatever, $1,000 a day on advertising, doesn't matter. You say, what if I could make that free for you? What if I could make advertising free? What? Yeah, yep. Yeah. For every $1,000 you put in, you get a 1000 out minimum. That's a really compelling offer. I'm not talking about sales funnels, not talking about marketing automation, not talking about tools, not talking about messenger chatbots. How much you spend on advertising? $1,000 a day. What if I could turn that into $1,000 a day? What if I could help you generate leads at cost? What if you could generate sales at cost? The cost of acquisition... CPA, cost per acquisition, is the number one metric that all businesses need to be looking at outside of profit or revenue, cash flow. 
CPA is a big one. You ask a customer how much do you pay per customer, they probably won't know. If they do know, you can help lower that cost per acquisition. You can help lower CPA and to an extent cost per lead, but that's slightly harder to work out. Those two there, business is gonna be salivating over. Fuck, you can really do that? Yep, I wanna show you how. It's not quick, but it is possible. We've talked earlier about density. You can increase the lifetime value of a customer or what we call transaction density. I wouldn't use the term transaction density too much unless they're an e-commerce store because e-commerce will know what a transaction density is. What if they bought sooner? What if I could get more people to buy from you sooner? Most people, as a rule of thumb, this is from Google's data, zero day of truth. Most people take about 90 days to buy and they'll take eight interactions and four hours worth of content. That's a lot. What if we could eliminate that and skip that? And this is possible. Here's the flow for this. If someone opts in, and a business is currently generating leads, there's a part where the customer says, yeah, I want to sign up. I'm interested in this lead magnet. I'm interested in this piece of content. I'm interested in signing up. They will be, first of all, added to that email list. Here's the, the, where, this, where we're going to do this differently. Most people will create a little thank you box there that says, thank you, your email is on its way, and they'll keep them on the page. Let's say that this is website.com forward slash freebie they'll opt in and a little message will come up saying thank you so much for your opt-in thank you so much for your message thank you so much we'll be get back to you right? that's the first thing people do which is wrong next thing that people do which is wrong is they'll redirect them straight away to the pdf we think that if we send someone to the pdf they'll be happy makes sense you say hey here's the pdf guide they go great again wrong what we're going to do is we're going to redirect them to a thank you page. The thank you page is without a doubt the most underutilized but valuable page in the marketer's arsenal. We say a few things. First of all, we acknowledge. We say, hey, I know that you've just entered your email address. You took a risk. We've got that. We've got your email address. And this is just a tiny lettering at the top. I totally understand. Thanks so much. Great. We've got this. Your email is on its way with to the email address you gave us, make sure to check your spam folder. The next thing we do is we offer bonus training. We say, we've got this really short video, click play below, watch this video here, because I want to teach you, let's say that they've said, I want to find out the, the best way to make espresso. I want to show you, I've got some bonus training on how to source the cheapest, most ethical ingredients and how to make barista co quality coffee at home, even if you don't have a full-sized barista machine. Some bonus training. What that video is a sales letter or more specifically a VSL. It is a video sales letter selling one of the lower ticket products. You end up dialing this in and you end up essentially playing around with the messaging. It's not going to work. It does sometimes work straight away, depending on whose formula you use. In terms of conversion rates, let's say from this page, you get a 40% conversion rate and you get a 5% conversion rate from this opt-in. 100 people here and 100 people here, you've had 45 go through. This might convert at anywhere between 1% and 3%. So you'd need 100 people to make one to three sales. Customer is never more likely to buy when the offer is put in front of them. If I say to you, I want to show you how to create you know, great coffee or the best way to make espresso, your interest in making espresso is highest then. A lot of people go, yeah, now I'm going to let you like think about it. I want to make sure that if someone's interested in this, there's obviously enough of a pain point where they thought, I need to fix this. I really want to fix this. I'm going to put in my email address. And for me to say, I've got some bonus training and I've got another product that can help you. I'm not forcing you to take it but I am saying there's an extra product here that can help you. This here, these sales, the one to three sales per hundred people, roughly speaking, that equates to what? 60 bucks? If it's a $20 product, we're up to about $50 sales. So that could be as much as 150. Do you now know that you generate roughly $150 for every hundred people that opt in? Roughly a 45% conversion rate. That means that you have every 220 people roughly is worth $150. You dial it in, obviously you've got to test it. It's not straight away, but this does work. This system here works for the sake of implementing a thank you page. Our customers, and especially for insurance agents, furniture sales, info products, courses, coaching, 
sports training, sports equipment, bag launches like holdall sack bag launches. This here has basically eliminated their advertising costs because they're able to put every single dollar from this sale here back into advertising because they know that the next sale that they make is going to be where the profit is. Deepak, interesting question. Let me know, Deepak, what do you think a high ticket product is? Tell me what a high ticket product, what, what's a range for a high ticket product? Because this is the, one of the biggest, and I've perpetuated this and I, I, I shouldn't have done this. The method to generating what a high ticket sale is no different to generating a low ticket sale. It just takes more time. So people think that it'll only work longer, it'll only work with the shorter term sales. Is high ticket five grand, 10 grand, 80 grand? 450,000, 1.6 million. 1.6 million was the single largest sale that we ever made at our agency, was to take over a, a what do you guys call it, like timeshare. We don't really have it in the UK. That was pretty much generated through this system, $1.6 million. The reason why we were able to generate this is absolutely due to the, the, the sales team, which was us, but we had to take them through this process at some point. We had to say, great, look, if you want us to take care of your email, absolutely fine. It's 25 grand, whatever. But you can absolutely level this up. And there are guys out there who are leveling this up for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Live the exact same process. Because after someone buys this product, they go, yeah, I want to buy it. They go to the checkout page. They enter in their details. After they buy that, first of all, there'll be an order bump here. I'll also increase it, which is why we call it transaction density. Then I'll redirect them immediately to an even larger ticket. Let's say that this is 20 bucks. This one will then be 200. Now, I personally don't do the whole upsell up. And some of the guys out there with the info products and the launches, they do 10 upsell pages and it's crazy. I'm sure it converts, but I don't think it creates long-term customers personally. But this process of doing one upsell and a second upsell essentially generates the revenue to pay for the rest of your stuff. I would build this into my proposals. I would say, yeah, here's a 25 grand proposal. But if you want to, we have a $100,000 process that will take you even further. Uh, always use a thank you page. Give the link to the PDF. Always use a thank you page. 100%. Give the link to the PDF and then add another offer. No link. The link is sent via the email. So. We redirect them to a thank you page. We say, thank you so much. Your PDF, your download, your training, you know, software, whatever it is, is being sent to your email address. I'm gonna show you guys and you can get behind the scenes. I'm gonna show you my thank you page that converts about 2%. Here we go. Thank you so much for downloading your 49 niche examples are on the way to your inbox right now. Click the play button to watch the bonus training below. Learn the three-step weird method that shows fast, profitable niche other funnel builders have ignored. This is then a, a basically bonus training that then ends up with a sales letter. Now, I'm not saying that this is gonna be something you're gonna do immediately from the get-go. I'm not saying it's gonna be something that you're gonna be able to create overnight, but your customers, if they have a product line for the sake of putting an offer in front of someone who's just become a lead, I don't know why we have this aversion to sales. It's a, a universal thing where people are like, oh, I, oh, I don't really wanna make, a sale someone's just opted in i don't want to make a sale bullshit this is the equivalent of you going to the doctor saying look i've got these symptoms this is where it hurts and him going great we can fix this did you also know that you have a stomach ulcer or whatever and you're going here's a further prescription it's a bad analogy because i think we over prescribe but imagine if the doctor knew that there was something else they could help with all right there's the really old adage where the guy starts work for a sporting goods store it's, he's a friend of a friend and he's a bit of a bum, but the guy said, the owner of the sports store says, yeah, you can come and work for me for a day. It's, it's a commission based business. So make sure that every sale you make, that's what you're going to be taking home. Eight hours rolls past. The boss goes up to the guy and says, how many sales you made today? The guy says, just the one. It's just one sale. Jeez. Yeah, I managed to sell a huge yacht. You sold the huge fishing yacht over there, the $250,000 fishing yacht. Yeah, yeah. How the hell did you do that? The guy came in and said, look, I'm looking for some fishing lures. The guy was like, yeah, fishing laws are like 50 cents. So I took him over to the fishing laws. I said, look, if you're looking for new fishing laws, what are you fishing for? He says, we're going to go out the bay. We're going to try and hunt some marlin. Do you have a marlin rod? No, we don't. I need a new rod. I took him over to the rods. When we were at the rods, I said, how many guys are you going with? He said, oh, it's going to be a group of us, four or five of us. He goes, are you going to be able to keep all your stuff cool? If you catch one of those marlin, have you got like a net? I sold him a net and then I sold him a cool box. Before we knew it, 
I'd sold, upsold them and upsold them to the yacht. I guarantee the guy who bought the yacht was over the moon that someone came along and sold to him. If there's one thing worse than a salesperson pestering you, it's that there's no salesperson coming up whatsoever. So this process here says to the people, I completely understand. Thank you so much for downloading your free thing. It's being sent. Sending that email is via um, active campaign. Yeah, there's loads that do that. MailChimp can do it, the, the automation thing. They send the email, but you give them bonus training, which is essentially a video sales letter saying, I, I want to give you this product. It's not designed to be profitable. It's designed to pay for the cost of acquisition in the first place. You could just build that, just the thank you page. If you had a really tight system for selling that. I'm telling you, it basically allows me to continue advertising at scale. I've actually put all of my best converting funnels and automations and lead magnets and emails and pages and stuff ready to use in a 30-day free trial for the marketing software that I use called High Level. Now, what's really cool about High Level is that you can not only use it for your own business, using the lead generator to find new clients for your own agency, for example, but also for a flat monthly fee, you can onboard unlimited clients and give them the exact same offer. Plus, you can use all of my funnels and automations for free just by signing up. If you head over to sellyourservice.co.uk forward slash high level to claim your free 30 day free trial and for a limited time, get a one on one onboarding call so you're all set up and ready to go even faster. You can head to sellyourservice.co.uk forward slash high level or use the link down in the description below. Anyway, back to the video. Last one traffic magnet. It's not all about pages and, and funnels. I want to flip this a little bit. The traffic magnet is basically about helping them rank better. So it's about SEO ranking. And you might think, oh, look, I'm not a search op optimization specialist. That's fine. Neither am I at all. I certainly don't call myself a search optimization specialist. Uh, but we do rank really well. And we've helped some customers rank for some amazing terms. This is also an authority piece. If you have a customer who is, like we said, an influencer, maybe speaker, sorry, they're not a speaker, but they want to get into speaking, or maybe they have a product, but they want to start speaking at events, or maybe they want to justify or increase their prices. This is a great way of doing that by increasing their authority and increasing their, their impact in the marketplace. And finally, this is all about building out, obviously, traffic on automation, as well as audience. I'm going to talk about audience because this is going to be slightly different, I think, to what you guys are expecting. Type of business that, that really benefits from this is one that's already making sales. And incredibly, there are businesses that make sales without a lot of traffic, but they just do it through hard work and cold calling and moxie and grit. Or they've been around for 20 years, but they don't get a lot of traffic to their website. So they're already generating sales. The reason this is important is because a business that's generating sales can afford to buy traffic. A business with zero sales can only afford to put time into their traffic process, which is going to take a long time. It still does take a while to rank, but for the sake of buying traffic, which is what we're going to be talking about, they need to be already generating sales. They're also doing lead generation. A good example of this would be a server business that we worked with back in 2013, maybe. Like the concept of virtual machines was becoming really big. The concept of working remotely was becoming bigger and more acceptable. And now everyone's phone does the things that entire servers were built to do 10 years ago. But these guys were attending a lot of events, huge number of events. And they were trying to generate leads through the classic, like the iPad giveaway. If you've ever been to one of those events, and I was like, hey, sign up here and get, an iPad, get a free iPad. And they're a relatively new player to the market. They were doing sales. They were doing leads, but they weren't able to do them at scale. So they were struggling to do this at scale. They basically had sales teams and they needed to be able to do this at scale. They needed to be able to do it 24 hours a day. The benefits to this is, again, basically what you're going to be selling. First of all is audience growth. Now, if you're already generating sales, you've got an audience somewhere. And a lot of people are like, do people really want to know more about translation and localization? Do people really want to know more about server racks? Yeah. Tens of hundreds of thousands of people want to be a part of that. They want to understand that and be a part of that philosophy. Growing your audience. If you say, look, if you're already generating sales and leads, but you want to do it at scale, you're struggling to do it at scale. I'm going to show you how to increase your audience. Also increase your prices, which is a big one. 
if you're able to say to a business, a coaching business, maybe that's got like five or six plus coaches, you say, how would you like to add a zero onto your coaching calls? How would you like to increase your average invoice? Go, yeah, that sounds good. Awesome. Here's how we can do this. This process is about increasing prices, increasing the audience, and also, also lowering your ad cost. So here's what the flow looks like. Unsurprisingly, this is going to be a big part about content. I'm going to split this up. Chances are, if they haven't got traffic, it's because they're not producing any content or they're not promoting themselves. So the first thing you're going to do is create what we call authority content for them. So this is great for copywriters. This is great for people with a co content team. You're basically, I talked earlier about how they need to be producing one piece a week. This is how you're going to help them do it. You help them produce one piece a week. You start with a killer, high quality, long form piece of 10K content. You interview them, you draw that out of them, and you've got a long piece there. And then you say to them, cool, we're also going to do some blog posts for you. Remember, they're already generating sales, okay? So we have a bit more time. Where a lot of people get unstuck with this is they're not generating sales, they're not already generating leads, but they think that creating blog posts will immediately turn them into a Google-ranked business overnight. And that's just not what happens. And you know that's not what happens. Then a paid platform like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, what we do is we take those platforms, we start to look at who is reading this type of content, and we both remarket to them like this, and we build what we call lookalike audiences. Look alike. L-A-L. This scales and begins to grow really quickly. This probably is minimum a nine month process plus minimum. We're gonna help them rank absolutely by creating this type of content regularly and repeatedly. But what we're also doing is uh, an audience funnel, an authority funnel and lowering ad cost inside one of these platforms. Facebook is probably the easiest place to go for right now. I also really like YouTube. I know Instagram's owned by Facebook, but just strictly keeping it on Facebook and YouTube does the same. In this piece here, we take this same content, anyone who's a lookalike audience, I'm not gonna get into the specifics. If you look up Miles Beckler at milesbeckler.com, he'll teach you how to do this for free. He's got blog posts, YouTubes, podcasts, interviews. I absolutely love Miles, love working with him. He'll teach you how to do this stuff. So we take, even if it's 20 people, right? Even if it's 20 people, you can create lookalike audiences from that. If they've already got sales and leads, you can create lookalike audiences from them. And we take those lookalike audiences and we say, it's a lookalike audience of their email list, a lookalike audience of their customers, a lookalike audience of their website traffic, a lookalike audiences of their subscribers. And we start to show that same content to them, just the blog posts. Now I'm even gonna go one step further. You take those con pieces of content, which may be 500 or 1,000 words, and you just have the content, the written content, inside the Facebook post which you are promoting. And you see, there is a link if you want to read the rest of it or read the 10,000 word one. Anyone who interacts with these posts, even better than this is video, if they've got video content, and you might have to create video content with them, and it's easy, I'm doing it right now. You just do a live broadcast, it doesn't even matter if anyone doesn't watch it. You take it and you push it out to those lookalike audiences. You so say, here's some free, completely free video content. No call to action, no, no sales process, no ads, no opt-ins. You just push content out to them. Because you're also gonna build an audience over anyone who says, anyone who watches 50% plus of these, of these videos, put them in another list, because they're qualified. And from there, you can start offering opt-in forms. Now again, typically, in the past, I've done it where I've shown three different videos and then one like ad at the bottom. This one here, when it starts to work at scale and people wonder how they never did this before. And what I like about this is if you've got this process working and this process working, you can add this one in really easily. But there are businesses who are already doing leads and sales who essentially need a campaign and notice we haven't talked about, we haven't said, oh, you're buying a funnel. We're basically saying, look, would you like to lower your ad cost? Doing this lowers your ad cost. Increase your authority. Even just creating the high content, high quality, long form piece of blog content will increase your authority. 
And ideally they've got a book and then you can begin to mix that into the funnel as well. But you're building out an audience. You're saying to everyone who visits the website, that's one audience on Facebook, right? Or YouTube does the same, remarketing. I also wanna create lookalike audiences from anyone who visits. I wanna create lookalike audiences from my list and I've got my list. I wanna create lookalike audiences from my customers and my customers. And you're able to use this information and you just get, you pay to put free videos in front of them. That is what will increase authority. And there's ways of targeting off the back of that as well. So those are the three funnels we've got. Listen, we've got some questions here. Can that bonus also be a, a video where you ask them to read a book review and in the review, there is a link to Amazon where they can buy a Kindle. The short answer is yes. I would just test it, man. I would test it. We've got one where after you opt in, you have a, there's like a free plus shipping offer on the book. And we then ask for a review afterwards. My advice is just whatever offer you can think of, really think it'd be really fucking good. Remember what I said earlier, bought sooner. Most people buy in 90 days. They do some kind of, what if we could do that to one day? What would be the thing you'd want them ideally to do immediately then? Test it. And you can always split test the offer again as well. I like that tip on the thank you page. Do you agree that it's sometimes better to get the offer right in front of them rather than relying on future nurturing as people in their right frame of mind? 100%. Someone is never more likely to buy than right now. So the number one best time to close on a marketing funnel proposal or any proposal is there and then. This is why I always do marketing proposals live face to face. I'll do them over typically Zoom or whereby or something. Ideally, I do it in person. And most people go, yeah, but no, the customer wants to read over the offer. They want to read over the proposal. No, they fucking don't. They absolutely don't. It's nonsense, all right? They absolutely want to feel like they're making the right decision. They're making a smart decision. And they'll give you excuses. And I'll say, we want to read it over. I say, look, man, you need to buy this at some point. Would you agree with that? At some point, you're going to have to buy this. Yeah. So tell me what's wrong with the offer that I gave you. I just, I don't like to rush into things. I completely agree. I don't like to rush into things either. But what's the worst that's going to happen if you buy today? Here's the example that I would give. Again, going back to, to doc, being a doctor, a few years ago, I broke my wrist quite badly in a surfing accident. I had to go into hospital. It was a scathoid break, really bad one. The doctor told me, we're going to have to jiggle it about, right? You're going to have to take a lot of painkillers. It's going to make you feel woozy. We have to jiggle it about and essentially re-break it, even though it had just broken a few days earlier. I kept it for two days. I was like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I kept it for two days. They said, we're going to have to re-break it because it's knitted in areas. We're going to have to re-break it. You're going to have to take some drugs. You're going to have to be in a, a plaster cast. You're going to have to come back in six weeks and do another plaster cast. And then afterwards, we might have to do surgery. And then you're going to have to have a lot of physiotherapy on it. You have to do a lot of exercises. At that point, I'm thinking, fucking fix it. Now, imagine if the doctor went, cool, let me know if you've got any questions. I'll let you think it over. And I'm like, fix it now. Do the thing now. That's exactly what people are in their state of mind when you've given them an offer. So I'm a big fan of putting an offer in front of someone. No one has ever lost a sale by putting the offer in front of someone too quickly. You'll get a rejection, a no, and you go, why? And they go, they give you a reason. That reason is an objection, and it's a, a way to learn how to sell to them quicker afterwards. Good question. Though. We're trained not to jump down their throat after the conversion. I think that's why, which is, and it's funny, that's universal. Yeah, and the reason that's universal is because people have an inherent fear of being disliked. I would gladly be disliked by very few people in order to be seen as, Mike's really keen to help me. He's got all of these products available. This company is really keen to help us. They've got all of these products available for us right now. They clearly want to help us out. I'm not ready to buy just yet, and I don't have to. I can just exit the page great but i do know that mike is absolutely willing to put offers in front of me the thing i don't like the thing i loathe more than anything is the the warrior forum clickbank style launch process where they launch a product to you they try and 10 upsell pages and then they just fuck off and they never update the product or content ever again because they've got a grand per person they they're what we call white whale marketing because they know that one in a thousand people on their list is going to buy every single product and it's going to generate them six, seven figures. Okay. As in 10 of those people, a hundred of those people are going to generate them six, seven figures. They don't care about the lower end people. And that's why they then get strut around going, you know, every sale we do is uh, every launch we do is like six, seven figures minimum. And it's because they have a fuck ton of upsells, but then they never do anything with the customers afterwards. If you want to play the long game, you make an immediate offer to them and say, Hey, I can help you out. But you continue that through the process. Would I consider 2k high ticket? Nope, absolutely not. I would say that 2k is, should be, it could be a core product. Absolutely. Um, as long as it's got a, 
at least a thousand pounds profit margin, which means it only costs you a thousand pounds, but you shouldn't be delivering anything for 2K. 2K is a course, 2K is a coaching program. We've bought uh, books and training material for two grand. If you think that going to university, buying some of their books is $200, 10 books is two grand, that means that you shouldn't be doing services for that. Your high ticket services should absolutely be in the five figure range. Hence, my book is where we get into the plug process, right? Five figure funnels, that will literally teach you how to sell marketing funnel services for five figures. 2K is great. I think all businesses should have a 2K product as long as it's profitable. That's your course, that's your training, that's the level of equipment. And if you go, my customers don't want to pay more than that, you've got the wrong customers. Uh, where does a VA come into this? I remember you once mentioned use a VA for delivery. Care to touch on that for a bit? With you, it's wrong with the customers. Where doesn't my VA come into this? <laughs> my VA does a lot of different stuff. The two VAs we've got, they look for blog content, they hire people. To be honest, there's nothing in here that you need to get a VA to worry about too much. But if you have a process for creating this, you can pay someone else to do it. That would be where I would start. If you have a process for building out a sales page, this is a beautiful $3,000, $4,000 project here. Single sale, single page, and they go, we don't have a video sales letter, great. It's another four grand and we'll help you create a sales letter. If you've got a process for it, that helps a lot. But immediately here, there isn't anything that sticks out immediately. My VA is more for my stuff, personally. Cool, cool, cool. All right, guys, I think that's it. Cool. In the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching. Massively appreciate it. Head over to sellyourservice.co.uk if you want to get any of our free training. I've actually got that 49 niches. I think it's like sellyourservice.co.uk forward slash 49 niches. Uh, enter your email address there and it'll, not only will you get 49 niches that funnel builders should go after as well as it does actually tell you a little bit about what they'll buy but also you'll get redirected and you'll see how we use that sales process and how you could build that for customers thank you so much meantime guys have courage commit and take action bye everyone